then Ghana never got. Yes. Why, why that title? If Ekufuadu had died without becoming president, uh, like J.B. Danko and others, his tribute would have been replete with that statement that this is the visionary leader who would have transformed Ghana. Unfortunately, we didn't get him. Mm. That is what many would have said, perhaps mm. including myself. Mm. When he became president, the Akufuado that we were marketed to, mm. we didn't get him really? as president. Mm. Yes. So that is where the title is coming from. Are you, are you piqued? I, I see people write that you are one of the people who you know, campaigned um, seriously for him or against the Mahama administration. And so you virtually were one of those responsible for birthing uh, the president. I'm sure that you were, you were, you were looking for that president. And, and so it appears that a lot of things that you say are born out of a certain level of disappointment. You are very right. I said in the fourth John, and I think I repeated a bit of it here, that in 2012, I voted for President Mahama because I liked him. But by 2016, I felt he didn't uh, deserve to be re-elected. So the MPP campaigned on the stories I did. I did those stories because I was a journalist. I'll do them again if I had the opportunity. Then they capitalized on that. But I personally convinced a few people that I could to vote for Akufado because I felt uh, Ghana needed someone. And we were told he was um, incorruptible, no nonsense, all the accolades that we needed to have as someone to be at the Jubilee House and restore sanity in our body politic. I thought I saw that in Akufado. Mm. When he became president, I didn't see that, and I'm very disappointed, and uh, I have <coughs> lost faith in our democracy. Really? Not democracy as a whole, but Ghana's democracy, because of Akufuado. So to say that I'm disappointed mm -hmm. is uh, um, an understatement. So in, in coming up with this book, in the, in the fourth John, you, you, you've told us that you spoke with uh, President Mahama. Yes. First one, did you get the opportunity of speaking with President Kufaro to also tell him about how disappointed you were and, and perhaps to, to get his, um, his response or his reaction on, on, on that? No, and this is the explanation. I spoke to a number of people including uh, his cousin, Gabi Asarochirudaku, who was uh, gracious enough to allow me to have over two hours of recorded interview with him. So I asked all the questions I thought I could ask concerning the president, the family, and the government. But why did you have to speak with Gabi instead of the president? So I'm coming to okay. that. I, as a journalist, we have our sources. Yes. Uh, sometimes you know. If I have to speak to Randy and I know that it's positive that Randy will speak to me, sometimes you go through people around him mm. or at least mm. So I got uh, <clears throat> the feeling that he may not or he wasn't willing to speak to me. Mm. So I decided to get cross all the T's and dot all the I's that I could from Gabby. Mm. But after that interview, I mentioned to Gabby that I wanted to speak to the president. Would he be open to me? And Gabi said, well, I don't think so. Why? I said, why? He said, oh, he thinks you've been mean to him. No, the said, president thinks you've been mean, mean to him. Mean to him, yes. And um, I said, well, but even Mahama, I did uh, similar works under Mahama, but he spoke to me. He said, well, <clears throat> there are different personalities and people may choose to react differently. This is what Gabi said. So it confirmed... Uh, my sources uh, intel that I wasn't going to be lucky. Mm. Fortunately, I spoke to Gabi. I also spoke to some ministers of state and others. But uh, <clears throat> very much later, I decided to, I didn't even tell Gabi, go through the lawyer of the president, uh, Koe Suman, to uh, find out whether <clears throat> there was a chance to get an interview with the president because I was writing a book about his administration. And he said, well, uh, he would advise that the best 
uh, person to go through was Gabi. That's what question I told you. Yes. So I went through Gabi. Again. Again, and Gabi said I should write to him first. And looking at the timelines, I didn't think it was going to be feasible. So mm. I just abandoned the idea. Okay. So that is the story behind whether or not I spoke to the president. Okay. So, so but I've invited him to, to the launch. You invited the president? Yes. <laughs> okay. What, what, what is this book going to tell us? This book is going to tell you mm. about how Ghana has been governed under the Ecuador presidency. Mm -hmm. Whether or not Ekufuadu knew or knows about some of the rots that happens under him, mm. what decisions goes uh, or what goes into some of the appointments he makes. Mm. There's an interesting story about how a Supreme Court judge mm -hmm. was selected. There were issues surrounding the selection of that Supreme Court judge who was young from a political platform mm -hmm. to the High Court in less than two years, mm. elevated to the Supreme Court. Mm. But there's a very interesting story behind that. Mm. Uh, even the parliament, how it works, the NDC, how they were able to get Bagwin elected. Mm -hmm. I got information about uh, some money from Jubilee House to the appointments committee. Mm -hmm. And MPs confirmed this on record. Muntaka and uh, Joe Wise confirmed this. So there are a lot of uh, issues, and I also spoke to the woman who alleged the MP mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court judge called to convince her to vote for uh, Michael Quay instead of uh, Bagwin. Mm. So a lot mm. uh, inside the Kufado presidency, corruption scandals, uh, how institutions are systematically undermined under this administration, media freedom. So there's so much, mm. and I was fortunate to get interviews. Some spoke on record. They wanted me to record them, like Gabi and Akumia and others. But others, too, for certain reasons, would give you information. Did you speak them. with the vice president? No. Any reason? Well, I think uh, he said, I think he was busy, but... Mm. Mm. I spoke to certain sources close mm. to him. What's the most important part of this book? What, 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 which part of this book will we find very riveting? It's a title or a chapter titled When Prime Minister Gabi Called a Bank Manager. When Prime Minister Gabi Called a Bank Manager. Yes. And what is that one about? It's about influence okay. that the president's family is alleged to wield. Mm -hmm. So I asked him and he didn't deny. He didn't deny? He didn't deny. Okay. He told me how he exercises or uses that influence and how he benefits from it. Mm. And I found that revealing. How he benefits from it? Yes. Financially? Yes. Okay. 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 And, and that's titled what? Uh, when Prime Minister Gabi yes. called a bank manager. Okay. All right. So, so it's happening today? Yes. Uh, Christ, Christ the King, King Parish Hall? Yes, okay. at 5 p.m. Okay. Yes. Uh, is that something about you and the Christ the King Parish Hall? It looks like that's your preferred venue. Well, or it's, is this proximity to the Jubilee House? <laughs> no, it is uh, central. Okay. And I'm also someone who is a bit conservative. Okay. If I meet you and I like you, yes. I'll stick to you forever. Okay. Yes. Are you Catholic? I'm a Presbyterian. Presbyterian? Yes. Please. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So, 5 p.m. Yes. Today? Yes, please. All right. Okay. So, I'm sure that we'll all be there. And uh, from yes, tomorrow, we'll, we'll, we'll get uh, a lot more about this book. Okay. But, but thank you. And um, for one thing, uh, you said it earlier on, we don't document. We don't write. We don't, I mean, I've been doing this thing for 27 years. I haven't. Uh, done any such thing so i'd like to congratulate you, uh, you so for much. for this one and uh, we so hope to speak on some other issues no before i go uh, sml are you yes. is sml in the book yes it's in a book the mother of all scandals that's how you label it yes that's what kwesi press said on your show <laughs> <laughs> but you are aware uh, that we read reports that they are bringing some aspect of it back yes which is part of the impunity of the administration. Okay. 
it is a typical uh, way of uh, this notion of Ajapadie. Mm. Even if Ajapadie is uh, fiction, and I've said it in this book, mm. the manner. So Ajapadie is featured in your book. Yes. Okay. Ajapadie and Ajapa. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. It is featured okay. as a, a chapter. Okay. Uh, somebody just gets up and decides that look. If Randy, if I, anybody in this country buys fuel anywhere in this country, a percentage should go to SML. If we produce gold in this country, every ounce of gold that we produce in this country, a percentage should go to SML. Every liter of fuel, uh, petroleum product we produce in Ghana, a percentage should go to SML. So if people like Ochehene are angry about the document, I understand their anger. Mm -hmm. But they should be more concerned about deals like this, which Ken Oforiata is behind. Mm. And he is behind us now. The, the extension of the contract to okay. all these uh, outrageous sectors mm. and the monies. Mm. There was a document from the Ministry of Finance, mm. and it said the minister had determined, mm. the minister was Ken Oforiata, mm. and he determined this without consulting the sector agencies. Minerals Commission wasn't aware, Petroleum Commission. And all the sector ministries were not aware. Mm. He just determined. And I think this is obscene and outrageous. And mm. I said on the Bullet show mm. that he asked my view. I'm disappointed about the political system, but he asked, okay, so going forward, what do I think? And I said that, look, if for nothing at all, we need change for some level of accountability. Mm. And I expect to hear people like Baumia talk about SML mm. because I think it is, it is that bad. And uh, we can continue this way as a country. Mm. Some of the things that we do as journalists, I, I feel pained. And there was a time I had to go for therapy, the clinical psychologist. Whoa. Yes. Uh, death threats and all of these. Things. So me going out of this country was a recommendation from that clinical psychologist that I take a break. Wow. So, it is not uh, uh, something we... So when I say I'm disappointed about this administration, mm -hmm. I get angry about things like this. Mm -hmm. When people are dying at the dialysis unit because at a point it was closed down because of 4 million cities. Yes. But the allocation to SML in the oil production sector, they are making like $120,000 a single day of production. Mm -hmm. As per that contract, mm. if it goes through, mm. and that's like close to four million cities mm. that a company is giving a day mm. just from a component of his contract, mm. and people are dying. Mm. So when you see all of these things, and then you are Ghanaian, you find it difficult mm. not to 